a very good morning and warm welcome to one and all uh, in the previous lectures we have already studied regarding engineering materials uh, manufacturing considerations basic procedure of machine design etc so today in this lecture we will be studying the basic principles of machine design before that i would like to highlight that uh, in the engineering materials we have studied it is classified into the two basic groups ductile and brittle materials a ductile material is one which has relatively larger tensile strength before fracture takes place uh, as far as the brittle material is concerned it has a relatively smaller tensile strength before the fracture so uh, you can say that a tensile strength of 5% can be considered to be the dividing line between the brittle and the ductile materials so structural steels aluminum etc are ductile materials while cast iron is an example of a brittle material so today this basic principle of machine design is concerned we'll start this lecture uh, with the understanding concept of modes of failure so basically we know that a mechanical component may fail that is it may be unable to perform its function satisfactorily as a result of the three modes of failure which uh, failure by elastic deflection failure by general yielding and the failure by fracture so basically we will first understand the failure by elastic deflection so to understand the mode of failure that is a failure by elastic deflection let us take an example of a transmission shaft so for transmission shaft uh, we know that the transmission shaft is supporting the gears if you take an example of an automotive gearbox uh, on the lay shaft and the main shaft as well as the clutch shaft the gears are mounted and they are in constant mesh with each other so transmission shaft supports the gears so in this in the design of transmission shaft the maximum force acting on the shaft without affecting its performance is limited by this permissible elastic deflection basically uh, this electric elastic deflection results in unstable conditions like buckling of columns or vibrations and hence uh, the design of the mechanical component in all these cases is based on this permissible lateral or torsional deflection so basically uh, it is said that uh, the elastic deflection should be or should not exceed 0.001 to 0.003 times the span length between the two bearings which is connected to the two ends of the shaft okay so design of mechanical component is based on permissible lateral or torsional deflection see basically what happens the stresses which are induced in the component are not so much significant and the properties of materials like you can say yield strain or ultimate tensile strength are not of much primary importance in this mode of failure but the modules of rigidity and modules of elasticity are the important properties which need to be studied which are very significant and need to be considered and the dimensions of the component are determined by the load deflection equations so that is all about the failure by elastic deflection next mode is failure by general yielding now basically a mechanical component which are made up of a ductile material you know that they lose its engineering usefulness due to the large amount of the plastic deformation once the yield point stress is reach so uh, let us understand first of all what do you mean by the general yielding now when a considerable portion of component is subjected to the plastic deformation then it is called as a general yielding and the basic difference between the general yielding and the localized yielding is that in localized yielding or you can say the region of stress concentration is restricted to very very small portion of the component and is not considered a significant it is called as a localized yielding okay uh, as far as the failure by general yielding is concerned the yield strength of since it's a ductile material uh, the yield strength of a material is an important property when a component is to be designed against the failure due to the general yielding so yield strength is the design criteria as far as the failure by general yielding is concerned now next is failure by flak failure by fracture okay so obviously you know that the components which are made up of a brittle material okay they do not function satisfactorily because of the sudden fracture and that too without any plastic deformation means what the failure in such case is sudden and total you can say and in such cases that is in the case of the brittle material or failure by fracture ultimate tensile strength of the material is an important property 
so with the help so what i mean to say is that with the help of the anti ultimate tensile strength uh, or you can say the ultimate tensile strength of a material is a property which is used to determine the dimensions of this component and in case of the uh, general yielding yield strength is the important property from which we determine the dimensions of the component okay uh, now next try, let us understand about the introduction so basically now i was talking about the uh, different loads which are acting on the machine so the machine parts which are subjected to the various forces uh, which may be either due to one or the more of the following reasons let us understand the reasons because of which the machine parts are subjected to the various forces and we have to do the stress analysis and accordingly we have to design the component so energy transmitted already we have studied in the mechanical vibrations because of the external force energy enters inside the system and the kinetic energy gets converted into the potential energy and vice versa then the amount of energy is dissipated and then <coughs> the system start vibrating so weight of the machine frictional resistances inertia of reciprocating parts change of temperature lack of balance of moving parts so there are number of reasons due to which the machine parts are subjected to the various forces and hence accordingly you have to design your mechanical component so basically uh, let us understand about the loads now any external force acting upon a machine part is nothing but a load so this is the basic definition of the load we have already understand so basically there are different types of loads the first one is you can call it as a static load or you can also call it as a dead or steady load now static load is defined as a force you can call it as a force which is gradually applied to the mechanical component and the most important part is that it does not changes its magnitude or direction with respect to the time so such a load is called as a static load or dead load live or a variable load it is also called as a fluctuating load is said to be a live or variable load when it changes continually right then there are suddenly applied or shock loads you can define it in such a way that uh, the load is said to be suddenly applied or a shock loads when it is suddenly applied or removed so this is the third category and fourth is the impact load a load is said to be impact load when it is applied with some initial velocity mu u right so these are the different types of loads you which you have already studied in the strength of material so just we are having some small review to understand the basic principles of machine design now a very important concept called as a working or a design or a allowable stress okay so basically uh, whenever you are designing a machine part whenever you are designing a machine component okay it is mandatory or you can say it is desirable that desirable is a good word it is desirable that the stress should be lower than the maximum or ultimate stress at which the failure of the material takes place and such a stress is known as a working stress or design stress and it is also called as a safe or allowable stress so basically to get you into the deeper insight now already i have explained you the definition what do you mean by the working design or allowable stress so basic concept is that allowable stress is a stress value which is used in design of a mechanical component to determine the dimensions of the component right so it is a stress value which is used in a design to determine the dimensions of the component and you can say that it is a stress or it is considered as a stress which you as a designer or you as a designer expects will not be exceeded under normal operating conditions so this is the concept of the allowable or the working or the design stress now basically allowable stress is denoted by the sigma and it is given by the formula sigma is equal to syt upon fs for ductile materials and for brittle materials sigma is equal to sut upon fs where syt is nothing but a yield strain and sut is nothing but the ultimate tensile strain so syt and sut values we can found out from the phg depending upon the which material you are selecting for example you are selecting a material from the phg 1.9 plain carbon steel c30 so for c30 it is a ductile material so what is the corresponding yield strain and then you have to select the factor of safety we will understand what do you mean by the factor of safety in the later slide so dividing by factor of safety you will get a sigma that is a allowable stress and from this stress you can find out the dimensions of the component 
and this stress should be such a that it should not be exceeded under the normal operating conditions okay so this is called as a safe stress or a design stress or a allowable stress denoted by sigma i hope you have understand this now we'll understand the factor of safety right so basically uh, whenever you are designing a component it is necessary to provide a sufficient reserve strength in case of an any accident so this necessary sufficient reserve strength in case of an accident is achieved by taking or by selecting a suitable factor of safety so factor of safety can be defined as fs it is denoted by the fs and it is nothing but the failure stress upon the allowable stress or you can also call it as a failure load upon the working load right now basically what happens now you have already understand what is a factor of safety and we are selecting the factor of safety we'll understand some uh, into the deeper side what do you mean by the uh, factor of safety now see there are number of factors which are very very difficult to evaluate accurately whenever you are doing a design analysis let us understand some of the factor the first one is uncertainty in the magnitude of external force acting on the component okay second one is what the variation in the properties of material like yield strength or ult ultimate tensile strength etc then the third and important factor is variation in the dimensions of the component which is basically due to the imperfect uh, workmanship okay again in addition to these three factors there are number of assumptions made in the design analysis why to simplify the calculations may not which may not be exactly valid in the actual working conditions so considering all these factors the factor of safety ensures against this all the uncertainties and unknown conditions so it is giving you the sufficient reserve strength against this uncertainties and that is why we have to select the appropriate factor of safety but again there are some guidelines how to Uh, select or how to select the magnitude of the factor of safety which also depends upon the number of factors which you have to understand okay so let us understand okay now once we have understand what is the magnitude of factor of safety let us understand the magnitude of safety depends upon the following factors so how will you select the magnitude of factor of safety so basically the first factor is effect of failure now what exactly happens see sometimes the failure of machine element involves only a little loss loss of or you can say a loss of time or loss of inconvenience for example a uh, failure of ball bearing in a gearbox right but sometimes Uh, in some cases there is a substantial substantial financial loss or danger to the human life for example uh, let us take an example of a failure of wall in a pressure vessel okay so considering these both the examples the factor of whenever you are selecting a factor of safety you should select high factor of safety in the applications where failure of machine part result in a serious accidents that is a failure of wall in a pressure vessel you should select a high factor of safety you should give a sufficient reserve strength and whenever you are selecting a factor of safety it should be low for the failure of ball bearing in a gearbox so this is the first factor then type of the load now basically uh, the factor of safety is low when the external force acting on the machine element is a static static means what a load which does not vary in magnitude or direction with respect to time on other hand a high factor of safety is selected when the machine element is subjected to a impact load and this is due to the fact that impact load is suddenly applied to the machine component which is usually at a high velocities so this is a very very important factor the next factor is degree of accuracy in a force analysis now see whenever the forces acting on the machine component are precisely determined you know the uh, precise value of that force acting on the machine component a low factor of safety can be selected but on the other hand a higher factor of safety is necessary when the machine component is subjected to the forces whose magnitude or direction is uncertain or you can see it is unpredictable so you have to select a high factor of safety so this is a now next again factor and the important factor is material of component now see 
basically when the component is made up of whenever you're selecting or you can say a component is material of a homogeneous ductile material for example a steel okay yield strength is the criteria of failure we have already understand the modes of failure so in such cases the factor of safety is very low right but on the other hand for a non homogeneous material like cast iron okay uh, the higher factor of safety should be chosen because the design criteria is nothing but the ultimate tensile strength so depending upon the material of component you have to select the higher or lower factor of safety the next is reliability of the component see now what do you mean by the first of all reliability there are certain applications like uh, continuous process equipment power stations or defense equipment okay where high reliability of component is expected okay so in such case the factor of safety should be selected high the factor of safety increases with the increasing reliability you can say now next is cost a very very important factor a cost of component i mean to say as the factor of safety increases the dimensions of component material requirement and the cost will go on increasing hence you can say that the factor of safety is low for cheap machine parts so this is very very important criteria now next is testing of machine element now a low factor of safety you can choose when the machine component is tested under actual conditions of service and operation right but a high factor of safety is necessary or you have to select a high factor of safety safety when the, it is not possible to test the machine or you can say a machine part or where there is a deviation between the test conditions and the actual service or working conditions so in such case you have to select a high factor of safety Uh, let us understand about the next factor service condition now when the machine element is likely to operate in a corrosive atmosphere or you can say a highly temperature environment a higher factor of safety is necessary you have to select a higher fos that is a factor of safety and the last but not least is nothing but the quality of manufacture now see when the quality of manufacture is high the variations in dimensions of machine component are very very less and you can select a low factor of safety but a high factor of safety is required to compensate for the poor manufacturing quality okay so basically you can say that the selection of magnitude of factor of safety is one of the difficult task which is faced by we or which is faced by the designer so uh, there are some guidelines for the selection of quantitative values of the factor of safety so i will explain these two or three quantitative uh, guidelines to select the quantitative values of the factor of safety so basically uh, whenever you uh, designing a cast component cast iron components you know that ultimate tensile strength is the failure criteria and have it has a non homogeneous structure okay so failure occurs when the maximum stress in the component due to the external force exceeds the ultimate tensile strength even once so cast and again you know that the cast iron components have a non homogeneous structure so many times there are residual stresses in the component and to account for all these factors a large factor of safety usually 3 to 5 based on the ultimate tensile strength is used in the design of cast iron components i hope you have getting next for the components like made up of ductile materials like steel which are subjected to the external static forces very important a component made up of a ductile material and subjected to the static load like a steel for example ductile material okay a steel strength is considered to be the criteria of a failure or a design criteria okay so now what happens when such components ductile components subjected to the static load are overloaded and the stress due to the external force exceeds the yield strength of the material this is small amount of plastic deformations which usually does not put the component out of surface again the ductile components have a homogeneous structures and residual st stresses can be relieved by the proper heat treatment as well so the stress analysis is more precise in case of the static forces and due to this reason the factor of safety is usually small in such cases and so based on the yield strength of the material we recommend a factor of safety as 1.5 to 2 but the components which are made up of a ductile material and which are subjected to the external fluctuating forces then the endurance limit is considered to be the criteria of failure and such component fail on account of fatigue so we'll be explaining understanding the in the next models about the fluctuating stresses design against the fluctuating stresses and fatigue failure basically uh, to just give you some slight information 
fatigue failure depends upon the magnitude of fluctuating stresses and the number of stress cycles and the nature of uh, fatigue failure or you can say the number of factors which affect the endurance limit are stress concentration not sensitivity surface finish and even the size of the component so therefore what happens the endurance limit of the component is reduced and to account for these factors the recommended factor factor of safety is slightly higher based on the endurance limit of the component so uh, regarding as far as the fluctuating stresses are concerned we'll be discussing in the later period of time so till now uh, we'll be stop uh, stopping here thank you so much so in the next series we'll be understanding some simple stresses or stress strain relationship then we'll understand shear stress and shear strain formulation where the formula is located in the phg stresses due to the bending moment then you can say stresses due to the torsional moment eccentric axial loading design of simple machine parts etc like cotter joint knuckle joint welded joint threaded joint bolted joint etc so we'll see so thank you so much